Welcome to the second lecture in Atheist Philosophies. My second lecture will present existentialism, skepticism, and an overview of Feuerbach and Schopenhauer. Existentialism. Existentialism is a study of being. This philosophy struggles with the meaning and purpose of life. It deals with choice and the ambiguity of the circumstances man must deal with when making a choice. It states that the decision is important in itself because this is what defines us as human beings. Each time we choose, we choose for all mankind because in that act of decision, we create what it means to be a human. Existentialism had its first stirrings with the works of Fyodor Dostoevsky, the great Russian novelist of the 19th century. His Notes from the Underground, 1864, is a seminal work of alienation. The philosophy became more fully developed with Soren Kierkegaard in the 19th century. Martin Heidegger contributed to its beginnings with Being and Time in 1927. Existentialism reached its completion as a philosophy in the 20th century with outstanding contributions of the French philosophers, Jean-Paul Sartre, Albert Camus, and Simone de Beauvoir. The movement spread rapidly and was embraced by intellectuals worldwide. American thinkers were important in propagating existentialist thought. William Barrett and Hazel Barnes were essential to the philosophy's elucidation in the United States, as well as Walter Kaufman, Nietzsche's great translator and biographer. This preface will discuss the atheist philosophers of existentialism who dealt with the death of God. What they meant when they referred to the death of God was, was with the, the advent and spread of technology and science, men and women's cultural underpinnings had started to disappear. Institutions such as the Catholic Church were still outwardly strong, but many people had found the belief systems of organized religion lacking. People who had become aware of the paucity of religious, cultural, and intellectual mainstays felt psychically alone, and some were floundering. Existentialism concerns itself with the crisis that comes about when a person realizes how absurd life is and how humans seek meaning vis-a-vis -a, -vis a meaningless universe. Alienation comes about when the familiar starts to have no resonance when a person feels like a stranger in her own life. Existentialism was a response to such predicaments, emphasizing the necessity for such qualities as authenticity, responsibility, and passion. Existentialists wrote about man's struggle with death. Heidegger made death a primary concern. He thought that the individual could define herself when she comprehended fully the eventual termination of her being. Sartre and Camus dealt with the issue of death in their work. Camus writes of the need to live passionately, even while knowing that existence can be terminated at any moment. Sartre discusses the necessity to face death bravely, but dismisses death as outside one's awareness. When death arrives, there is a loss of consciousness and a cessation of being. There is nothing left but a corpse. For Sartre, the most important difficulty facing the existential self was becoming a realized individual. The question of whether existentialism as a philosophy comes up regularly. Its critics claim that not only is existentialism subjective, but irrational. Certainly existentialists were aware of the limits of reason and the importance of the emotions. The great skeptical philosopher Hume found reason was a slave of the passions. But the existentialist purpose was to achieve authenticity and individuation. They had no interest in becoming one-sided. They concentrated on broader, more open thinking. Although Nietzsche and the French existential philosophers attempted to communicate their ideas more widely by means of plays, parables, and novels, Serious reasoning went into the existentialist literary productions. They were deep and involved thinkers. 
Anxiety comes about when a person begins viewing the world from a perspective that sees it as chaotic, irrational, and having an indifferent causality. At the same time, the awareness of the meaningless of life gives one a freedom which can create dread. Many people never achieve the individuality the existentialists see as essential to authenticity. Many will quickly try to forget the giddy experience of feeling completely free and fall back into the safety of received opinion or non-being, church dogma, conventionality, or at the rare extreme, suicide. None of these exits from dreadful freedom are authentic. Escapes into intellectual safety or non-existence are chosen by the coward. Choosing to avoid a choice is still a choice. How much more courageous, how much more valid, say the existentialists, to take up the heavy burden of the truth about existence and live freely and joyously in the midst of pain and ceaseless effort. Embrace your life and emerge an authentic being. There are criticisms of existentialism that have some validity. Facticity, or the circumstances of one's life, can be so weighty that choice becomes very limited. Another objection is the existentialist stance concerning free will. Sartre, the most outspoken advocate of free will, might have adopted a compatibilist, a compatibilist outlook had he known what we know now about the human brain. Sartre was very flexible in nuancing his ideas when presented with evidence. De Beauvoir's Ethics of Ambiguity, 1947, pointed out that children do not have much freedom and discuss child development. Sartre assented to her well thought out opinion. There have been other criticisms of existentialism. Harvard Marcuse criticized existentialism from a Marxist perspective, especially Sartre's being and nothingness. And he held that the anxiety and fear expressed by people is not due to their existential condition, but from the oppressive life under an oppressive state. Instead of criticizing the relations under which people live under capitalism, the philosophy says that men's alienation is an ontological condition. Existentialism thus becomes part of the very ideology which it attacks, and its radicalism is illusory. Theodore Adorno, in his Jargon of Authenticity, 1964, not only critiqued Heidegger's philosophy, but also his use of language. He condemned it as a mystifying ideology of an advanced industrial society and its power structure. But this is surely unfair. Heidegger is famously difficult to read. But his discussion of being and Dasein is not in the least mystifying once the difficult thinking is grasped. And Heidegger is not arguing for the human ascent to the power structure in being and time but rather a necessary separation from societal expectations in order to become a complete being. Adorno seems unable to separate Heidegger's politics from his philosophic thought. Other scholars cite Roger Scruton, who claimed in his book A Short History of Modern Philosophy from Descartes to Wittgenstein in 1995, that both Heidegger's concept of inauthenticity and Sartre's concept of bad faith were incoherent. For both Heidegger and uh, Sartre deny any universal moral creed, yet they both speak of these concepts as if everyone were bound to abide by them. In chapter 18, Scruton writes, in what sense Sartre is able to recommend the authenticity which consists in the purely self-made morality is unclear. He does recommend it, but by his own argument, his recommendation can have no ob objective force. Other thinkers rebut this statement. Familiar with this sort of argument, Sartre claimed that bad and good faith do not represent moral ideas. Rather, they are ways of being. Philosophers believe Heidegger would also claim authenticity as an ontological rather than an ethical way of being. 
Logical positivists, such as Carnap and Ayer, claim that existentialists frequently become confused over the verb to be in their analysis of being. This discussion becomes far too arcane, however, and needs to be left to the language philosophers. While such critiques are interesting, in the final event they are not robust. Dabovois insights are more interesting and to the point. Existentialism today remains as intriguing and challenging a philosophy as it was in the earlier 20th century. Universities with a humanist curriculum teach existentialism. But existentialism's greatest triumph has been, been among people outside the academy. The word existential is frequently, if sometimes incorrectly, applied to describe books, films, and art. It is also used to describe states of being. Bookstores carry works by Heidegger, Sartre, Camus, de Beauvoir, and Nietzsche. People buy their books regularly and read them with pleasure. Existentialism endures on the street because people are still taken up in the struggle of finding meaning and a fully realized self in a world free of a restricting God. Before I begin my discussion of individual existential philosophers, I would like to point out once more that except for Heidegger, the atheist existentialists wanted their philosophers, philosophies to reach a wider audience than merely scholars. They wrote essays, plays, novels, poetry, and aphorisms that would allow a wide range of people to understand and embrace their ideas. This portion of the lecture will discuss works and their plot lines by these philosophers because so much important material is embodied in them. <laughs> 